about what the specific heat capacity is going to be. And the typical procedure involves throwing that metal in a boiling water. And when you throw the metal in the boiling water and you assume both the water and metal are going to be in a thermal equilibrium at some point, thermal equilibrium means the, the temperature of the boiling water and the temperature of the metal are going to be the same at that particular point. And then the metal is transferred to in a foam cup containing you know, some amount of water. And then you have to figure out how much temperature is going to be changed, how the temperature is going to be changed off that um, uh, cooler water in the foam cup. And then, based on the calculations, you can figure out what the specific heat capacity is going to be for the metal. So there are actually three things going on in, in this question. So I want to write down uh, the metal side. So in the metal side, we're given the mass of the metal. The mass of the metal is 34, or rather 35.4 grams. And then it says it's being placed in the boiling water, so you can assume uh, the temperature of this metal and the boiling water is going to be the same. So I would say the initial temperature of the metal is going to be, so I'll just write down an uppercase T there. Initial temperature of the metal is going to be 100 degrees Celsius. And obviously it may not be exactly 100 when you actually do the experiment, depending on the outside pressure. But for this question, assume the, the boiling point of the boiling temperature of the water is 100. And then the question is saying the metal is just then transferred to a foam cup that contains some water. So I'll have uh, the water in the foam cup. And I want to make sure I write down what we know about that uh, water. So we're given the mass of the water, and that's going to be 40.0 grams. And then the temperature, the initial temperature of the water is going to be 21.1 degrees Celsius. And then well, we also given the specific heat capacity of the foam cup, so I'll have the foam cup as well being into an uh, into an, uh, play here. Uh, there are going to be times when they tell you don't worry about the heat capacity of the heat capacity of the foam cup, or consider that to be zero, which means uh, uh, the foam cup is a very good insulator or a perfect insulator, which is very unlikely to happen. And that's why I want to make sure I have this term in there as well. So the specific heat capacity of the foam cup is going to be 4.5 joules over degree Celsius. Okay, and then what would be the initial temperature of the foam cup? Well, the foam cup is actually in the cooler water, which has a temperature of 21.1 degree Celsius. So they both should be at an thermal equilibrium to begin with. So I'll say... Uh, the initial temperature of this foam cup, so TIF, is going to be 21.1 degrees Celsius as well. Okay, so then once everything is put it in there, and now assuming you don't lose any heat to anywhere else, it's just going to be the energy of the metal, because it's at a higher temperature, once it's placed in the cooler water, that energy is going to be transferred onto the, onto the water and onto the foam cup. Okay, so then the final temperature, once everything, all this three are in thermal equilibrium, is going to be 29. So that's going to be the final temperature for every single one. So I'll just go and write down here T final is going to be 29.2 degrees Celsius, and that's going to be for all of them. Okay, so if we uh, study this process, what's really happening, the metal, when it's placed in the cooler water, it's losing the heat. So I could say the heat, or Q, that's going to be lost by metal should be equal to the heat gained by water plus the heat gained by the foam cup, or the calorimetry in this case. Okay, and then since metal is losing the heat, I'm going to write down minus there just by the sign conventions. Now, what's the value is going to be, what the formula for the Q is? Well, I'm going to, for the metal side, I'm going to go ahead and write down the mass. There's a minus sign in front of it. The mass of the metal, the specific heat capacity of the metal, and the change in temperature for the metal. So we're using that MCAT formula in, in here. So then what's going to be the Q gain for, by the water? That's going to be the mass of the water, the specific heat capacity of the water, 
and the change in temperature for the water. Okay, and then what's going to be the Q for the foam cup? Well, uh, there is no mass for the foam cup, so it's just going to be the specific heat capacity uh, times the delta T for the foam cup. Okay, so that's uh, how you're going to be using both the MCAT equation and just Q equals the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature equation. Now, if you look carefully here, we would know everything except this uh, the specific heat capacity of the metal, and that's what we're really trying to figure out. Okay, so in when you actually do this experiment, you you set up everything, all of those, and what you're really trying to find out is the final temperature of the solution. Now, once you know the final temperature of the solution, you can actually calculate the specific heat capacity of the metal. So let me just go ahead and um, replace this, or not replace it, but just uh, kind of rearrange this kind of rearrange this equation so that I have the specific heat capacity of the metal on one side and everything else taken on the other side. So it's going to be the mass of the water, the specific heat capacity of the water, and then this uh, delta T of the water is going to be the T final minus T initial of the water, okay, and then plus the specific heat capacity of the foam cup, and then times the temp, uh, the T final of the, of the foam cup minus T initial of the foam cup divided by the minus the mass of the, the metal and the change in the temperature of the metal which is going to be the T final minus the T initial for the metal because remember uh, the T final is the same for all of them. Okay now let's go ahead and plug these values in. So we have the mass of the water is 40.0 grams. The specific heat capacity of water is going to be 4.184 joules over grams degree Celsius and then the final temperature of the water is going to be 29.2 minus the initial temperature, which is 21.1. Okay, and then that's all you have for the water. Uh, plus the heat capacity of the of the foam cup is 4.5, 4.5 joules over degree Celsius, and then times the change in temperature, which is going to be uh, 29.2 minus 21.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, and all that uh, divided by the mass of the metal, and the mass of the metal is 34, 35.4, and then uh, uh, the change in the temperature of the metal, so there's a minus sign in front of it, so don't forget that, is going to be 29.2 minus 100. Okay, so I'll trust you guys on the calculations, so make sure you go ahead and calculate this and uh, figure out what's that going to be, the specific heat capacity of the metal here. All the units will cancel out except uh, just the joules over grams degree Celsius. Okay, so at the end of the day, your specific heat capacity of this metal is, comes out to be 0.556 joules over grams degree Celsius. Okay, so this is how you calculate the specific heat capacity of the unknown metal when you're given that in the lab settings or even in the lecture, in any lecture question. Uh, if you have any questions on any of these calculations, uh, feel free to leave the comments.